Hello, hello, and good evening. My name is Jay, and I am your StriveScan facilitator for this evening. We are super excited to have you all coming in here and piling in. We have five great schools who have just six minutes to give you information about all their great things that they have to offer. We are super excited here, and I just want to say again, my name is Jay, and welcome to the Regional Admission Counselors of California, California virtual college fair. Again, we have five great schools with six minutes to give you all the information that they have. So it's going to be quick, be ready to listen and be engaged. I have just a couple of housekeeping announcements before we go ahead and get started with the presenters. So first off, there is a Q&A button that you should see at the bottom or top of your screen. That is going to be the way that you can ask your questions directly to the presenters. The only request that we have is that you ask the school directly or at least state the name of the school in the question so the right person answers the right question for you. Also, your audio, your video, all of that is off. So you can see and hear us, but we cannot see and hear you. Also, this is just one of many sessions that are happening with this organization, so we would love for you to register for more events. And this is being recorded. So in the case that you lose your notes or you're not able to follow up with someone and need to get that contact info again, you can definitely do that within one week at strivescan.com forward slash R-A-C-C. Now I'm gonna turn it over to our presenters and bring up our first school with Purdue University. Hello, everyone. I know they usually say first is the worst, but I'm going to have to disagree with that. Again, my name is Taylor. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at Purdue. Purdue is located in West Lafayette, Indiana. This is Purdue by the numbers. You can see that we definitely fall into that category of large public school. Majority of our students do come from the state of Indiana, but we have all 50 states represented and 12% of our student population does come from outside of the U.S. West Lafayette is a place where you get best of both worlds because the Wabash River splits Lafayette and West Lafayette. The area encompasses about 120,000 people. That is not including that student body number that we just went through. The area is safe. It has a bunch of festivals, obviously an ice skating rink and farmer's market. There are multiple restaurants on and off campus as well as a local Target. So the amenities are close by. This next slide goes through what our students are taking advantage of. That first student, Alexis, is a biology student and she takes advantage of the research opportunities at Purdue. She studies fish. As you can see, she's standing next to a fish tank. She also took a study abroad trip to the Caribbean where she got to make the classroom, uh, the ocean, her classroom. Next is Charlotte. She took advantage of our degree in three program where she studied communication and completed her degree in three years. She is very interested in radio and completed both an internship as well and she will start her job with the NPR radio station as soon as she graduates. SJ is a student that fell into a research program as well as he was talking to a professor after class. He will continue his research doing a master's program at Purdue as well. Jordan, that last student, is very interested in roller coasters. He studies engineering, but also is interested in a lot more. While he's publishing a book with some professors on campus, he also runs a food demonstration as part of our rec center. Students at Purdue are studying over 200 majors. They are divided up into these 11 different academic schools and colleges. All of our programs are direct admit, so when students apply, they are choosing their top two majors that they are interested in. For those students that are undecided, that exploratory studies program is going to be a great spot for you. Although you cannot graduate being undecided, we have advisors that work with students to help them choose a major that they can graduate from. I do want to take some time and talk about how applications are evaluated at Purdue. This is done in a holistic manner. While we receive over 55,000 applications each year, at least two people in our admissions office are reviewing each and every application. This slide is in there twice, but I wanna talk about going through how our applications are evaluated. They are done in a holistic manner. So we are looking at the specific grades in courses. We are looking at the rigor of those courses. We are also looking at academic trends. Within that, you are looked at in the lens of your own high school. So if you are taking advantage of the AP, IB, if you're taking any dual enrollment courses, those will be all taken into consideration. 
We also want to know what you've been doing outside of the classroom. So taking advantage of those extracurricular activities, those clubs, those organizations, even things like your, if you have any home responsibilities or family responsibilities, things like that are all taken into consideration. One plug that I do want to make is that our tuition has been frozen for the 10th consecutive year. We are the only school to be doing that for that long. Again, this is the, we are the only school and our president Mitch Daniels is very much pushing affordability for students both in state out of state and international students. Also, I want to talk about the Career Services Center on campus. My word of advice is to students just because you go to school in West Lafayette, Indiana does not mean that you are stuck there for the rest of your life. The CCO has great resources for students to utilize both during their time on campus as well as after they graduate. Whether it is the pre-professional advising, you need an outfit that you forgot and you can utilize our career, uh, career closet. Purdue has over 30 career fairs come to campus each and every year. A lot of these obviously have been doing done virtually. The photo in the upper right hand corner is from our industrial roundtable. That is where 400 companies come to campus and are recruiting Purdue students. I know that a lot of this is being done virtual, but just as many companies are recruiting Purdue students, um, both as they are looking for co-op research or job opportunities after they graduate. We offer a lot of opportunities to connect with the university, both via the admissions office events like these, as well as each of the academic colleges, as well as other campus partners are offering opportunities to learn more about Purdue beyond visiting campus. While we are open to visitors, those sessions have been smaller in size over the past year, but there are still great ways to learn about the university. I am going to pass it back to Jay to introduce my fellow Big Ten colleague, Aaron Monroe. Thank you. Thank you so much, Taylor. Yeah, come on up, Aaron. Ready to take it away. Awesome, thanks for having me everyone. Um, good evening, my name is Erin Monroe. I'm the Assistant Director of Admission with the University of Iowa. I'm regionally based in Southern California and excited to work with any future Hawkeyes. So the University of Iowa is located in Iowa City. We're over on the Eastern side of the state and just 20 minutes away from the Cedar Rapids Airport. We're a large Big Ten public institution and our home is a unique blend of high art and small city where town and campus really come together to make one of America's definitive college towns. On the right is a picture of our campus. If you look closely, you'll see that it organizes our campus into an east and west side with a river flowing through the center. The east side are, is primarily where our students' day-to-day -day life takes place, all within about a five to 10 minute walking distance of the building with the gold dome. What's not pictured here is the city that we're connected with and the city that really makes Iowa City home for our students. And that's downtown Iowa City, which is home to more than 100 different local restaurants, shops, and boutiques. We reside in a micro urban city and we have a population of about 200,000. It's really an extension of our students' campus life and it has internships, jobs, venues for the arts, lots of performances and festivals throughout the year. Um, and on the west side of campus, that's really more so home to our graduate student studies and also home to the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, which is recognized as one of the best hospitals in the United States and provides a lot of professional development experiences for our students that are interested in the health sciences. We have just over 31,000 students on our campus coming from all 50 states and nearly 100 different countries. We have a large out-of-state population and California is our fifth most populous state on campus. On average, students apply to us with about a 3.78 GPA, an ACT of a 26 or an SAT of a 1230. We offer over 200 different areas of study and some of our most popular majors for California students are going to be in our Tippie College of Business, an open major, engineering, psychology, anything really related to the health sciences like biology, chemistry, health and human physiology, um, and then all of our programs that are related to writing. The University of Iowa is known as the writing institution, and we have a fantastic English and creative writing program. So if you are interested in applying to Iowa, you can apply to us through the Common App, the Coalition application, and we have our own institutional application. 
Our application for rising seniors will open up in August of your senior year. If you have had the opportunity to take the ACT or the SAT, we'll use this RAI formula that is pictured here. However, we are happy to share that we will be test flexible for fall 2022. Students are encouraged to apply for admission with or without a test score. They will need to submit an essay and a high school transcript with their application. But if you are able to take the ACT or the SAT, we're encouraging you to submit those scores before April 1st. We're moving to a recommended early action deadline of November 1st, and this is to maximize scholarship opportunities and regular, and then we'll have a regular decision deadline of March 1 for admission. Students are going to be considered for merit-based scholarships with their application to Iowa, and our admission decisions are released on a rolling basis. Collaboration over competition really defines Iowa's academic culture. We have a 15 to one student to faculty ratio. You're going to get to know your classmates and your instructors. 33% of our students participate in research and they're going to be working with professional faculty and staff. We've really created and cultivated an environment that encourages our researchers to discover, inspire and innovate. And research happens in every single department on our campus. We offer student support services for your academics and for your well being. So there's going to be supplemental instruction, tutoring, subject based help centers available on our campus, and also embedded mental health counseling in our central campus locations. When students really want to broaden their academic experience and worldview, they then choose to study abroad in more than 77 different countries each semester. When our students are outside of the classroom, they are busy. We have over 500 different student organizations that are going to provide opportunities and a variety of interests and experiences. They're going to align with your goals for post-graduation or help you find new passions and then also keep you active. So there's everything from fraternity and sorority life to multicultural organizations, service and interest-based organizations. We're a school that's really rich in pride, spirit, and tradition. And so that comes out in our arts and our athletics. We have over 400 different performances put on by the Division of Performing Arts each year, and students in all majors can participate in those or support their fellow Hawkeyes from the audience. We offer 24 teams that compete within Big Ten NCAA Division I athletics. Pictured here is Kinnick Stadium, and that's where our football team competes. We've been recognized as having one of the best traditions in college athletics, and that's where our students and everyone at the stadium wave to the kiddos in the Stead Family Children's Hospital directly across the street from the stadium because that building was built so those kiddos have a Hawkeye view right down into the center of the stadium. I'd love to share with you more about what it is like to be a part of the Hawkeye family, and so feel free to connect with me after this presentation. I'll pass things back over to Jay. Thank you so much, Erin, really appreciate that. And just a reminder to everyone out there watching live that you do have the option of using that Q&A button, but we are now gonna go ahead and move up to our next presenter with Muhlenberg College. Thanks, Jay. Hi, everyone, good evening. My name is Becca Larson. I'm the Regional Director of Admissions for Muhlenberg College. Muhlenberg is a small liberal arts college located in Allentown, Pennsylvania. We're about 60 miles from Philadelphia and 90 miles from New York City, located in the city of Allentown, which is the third largest city in Pennsylvania, um, next to Philly and Pittsburgh. It's quite easy for students from the West to get to Allentown. You can fly into Newark Airport, Philadelphia Airport, both of which are about an hour and 10 minute drive from campus. And then we do have an airport in Allentown as well that generally requires a connecting flight. Allentown is situated within the Lehigh Valley, which is a population of about 750,000 and was rated in the top five for um, economic development in the U.S. So the city of Allentown is going through a big revitalization, a big transformation, and our students get to be a part of that. Campus itself is situated in suburban Allentown in a more residential area, but downtown Allentown is just a couple of miles away from campus. So students really do get the best of both worlds and certainly take advantage of our proximity to New York and Philadelphia um, for both um, career and just um, recreational and cultural activities as well. At Muhlenberg, we enroll just under 2,000 students, so we're quite small. Um, classes are you know, generally fewer than 20, and our student-to-faculty ratio is 10 to 1. Um, something that we're known for at Muhlenberg, we've been called consistently over the years the Caring College. And one feature you'll notice as you look at images of campus as you do our virtual tours and really get to see um, all that Muhlenberg has to offer, and you can see it in my virtual background, are these red doors. Um, red is a Lutheran sign of welcoming, and so every single door on campus is red, um, and we're known as a place where 
students, um, faculty, staff, really anyone on campus holds doors open for one another. So we're a friendly place with a deep sense of community. And I know that our students coming from further away really feel that sense of community the minute they step foot on campus. At Muhlenberg, we're primarily a residential college. 91% of students live on campus with guaranteed housing. Um, and we've been consistently ranked as um, in the, the top 20 or so for college food and often number one in the state of Pennsylvania. So we're very proud of um, all the delicious meals that come out of campus dining, um, especially our whoopie pies, which is a bit of a Pennsylvania delicacy. That's something that we really are proud of at Berg. Um, Beyond that, academically, we offer just under 40 majors at Muhlenberg. We're known for our strength within the visual and performing arts. Arts. We have a spectacular theater program with a concentration in musical theater. Um, and all of our, our artistic programs are non-audition based, although we do offer auditions for talent-based grants. Beyond um, our programs within the arts, we have business, accounting, economics, and finance. We have a spectacular pre-med program with an 87% admit rate into medical school, newer majors in sustainability studies and public health, um, neuroscience, undergraduate research is something that um, lots of our students participate in. And because we're small and our faculty are so teaching oriented, we're really proud of the mentorship and support we're able to give our students in their academic endeavors. About a third of our students double major and another third pursue a major and a minor. So if you're a student who wants to study multiple areas of academic interest or perhaps find connections across those different areas of interest, Muhlenberg is a great place to do that. Um, Beyond our undergraduate offerings, we do have many academic partnerships um, with other colleges and universities out there. So we have a three plus four program in dentistry with the University of Pennsylvania um, College of Dentistry. We have a three plus four program in optometry with SUNY College of Optometry, a three plus three program in law with Villanova University School of Law and several other academic partnerships. So we really want to help our students not only succeed um, in their undergraduate endeavors, but find ways to help them um, achieve what's, what's next in their academic and personal goals. Um, we also have early assurance programs with Boston University School of Medicine and Temple University School of Medicine, respectively. So again, really trying to help our students think about what's next. And our career center does that as well. Um, you know, lots of our students participate in different internship opportunities, whether that's local in Allentown during the academic school year or back, um, you know, in their hometown or in other cities throughout the U.S. and the world. Our um, career center does a series of what we call career road trips, where we take students into New York City or Philadelphia and really help them um, do different site visits and interviews with various um, employers so that they can really, you know, start to get a, you know, a, a jump start on the, those career opportunities that are of interest to them. So the Career Center is a really great resource and a lifelong resource, actually. So for students who, um, you know, are thinking or are alumni, rather, who are thinking about a job switch, um, you're able to do that at Muhlenberg, um, life, lifelong resource that students can take advantage of. Um, in terms of our admission process at Berg, we are a common application exclusive school. Um, it's the only way to apply to Muhlenberg. We have been test optional since 1996 and we're test optional for all programs and for honors and scholarship consideration. Um, so our admission process didn't change significantly with the limitations related to the SAT. Um, we really value the opportunity to get to know our applicants and our students throughout the admission process. So we really encourage you um, to, to get to know us, um, you know, your admission officer, um, to schedule an interview, which we've started for our juniors already. We'll be interviewing students throughout the summer into the fall and winter of their senior year. Um, and we really use a holistic review process. So we really um, want to get to know you, whether that's in person or virtually right now. Um, we are open for virtual tours um, and information sessions. And there's tons of different ways for you to connect with us, um, both virtually and in person. So if you have any questions about Muhlenberg, about our admission process, the audition process for our artistic programs or any of our academic opportunities, please don't hesitate um, to reach out. I'd be more than happy to share um, more with you, but I am going to pass it off to the next presenter. Thanks so much, friends. Awesome. Thank you so much, Becca. I really appreciate that. High Point University, you are next up, David. Okay. Welcome, everyone. High Point University, and my name is David Martinson, Regional Admission Counselor with High Point, and we are located in High Point, North Carolina, so right in the middle of the state of North Carolina, and we have about 4,600 undergraduate students, beautiful 500-acre campus, number nine in the nation right now for most beautiful campus according to Princeton Review, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, today, I'm going to be going through our four pillars of academic success, and this first one is academic excellence. Average class size of 17. And so you only have 
professors teaching you, no teaching assistants. And so you really are able to do research with professors. And we have a four-year graduation guarantee where you're able to get the classes you need. Also an exciting thing is we offer a tuition-free fifth-year master's degree in business leadership and communication for those interested in that. And all freshmen are assigned a success coach. So you are able to have someone guide you through your freshman year, help you choose your classes, choose your major if you need help with that, and then also help you get involved in uh, campus life. And for those who don't know what they wanna study yet, we have a special program called Project Discovery to help walk you through that your freshman year. And then 25% of every class is dedicated to experiential hands-on learning. We have experts that come to campus to work with our students. One of them here is Byron Pitts with ABC Nightline. Another one is Steve Wozniak, co-founder of Apple, who works with our engineering students and uh, electrical engineering students and computer science students as well. Undergraduate research is a huge part of what we do at High Point University. And we have a 97% placement rate into full-time jobs or graduate school within six months after graduation. And then our third pillar is the development of life skills. We intentionally teach life skills at High Point University. So what are life skills? These are things like communication skills, presentation skills, budget management, financial management, how to advocate for yourself, um, how to na um, navigate your energy levels throughout the day and when are you the most productive? How do you stand up after you fall down and you perceive that you failed and how do you keep moving on in life? And so our president teaches a seminar on life skills. He loves doing that for all the freshmen every year. And that's an exciting uh, tradition that we have as well. And then one of our favorite learning labs on campus is our 1924 Primes Five Star Steakhouse. This is on the student's meal plan. You don't have to pay anything extra. You can eat here once a week. You can invite friends. You have to make reservations. It's a five-star restaurant on campus, but it's also a learning lab. So wait staff are in there to train uh, are trained to teach you how to navigate a five-star restaurant. What do you do with the forks and spoons on the table? What do you order? What do you not order if you're like at a at an interview at, at, a, fan, at a fancy restaurant? Um, conversation, what do you do with your phone? We even have wine pairings for, um, for uh, older students on campus before they graduate and pairing wine with meals. And so some really cool things to do with this special learning lab on campus. And then um, really building character and communicating those values is huge for us as well as our fourth pillar. Community service is a big part of what we do, not only locally, but also internationally as well with having community service trips. And then campus life, a lot going on. Division I sports, over 200 clubs and organizations. This would include Greek life, club and intramural sports, religious groups, and then off campus with study abroad, all sorts of fun things to do on campus and off campus. And we are number one in the nation right now for best dorms according to Princeton Review. So residence life, a lot of fun, beautiful dorms to stay in and a lot of fun activities also throughout the year as well. We are on the Common Application exclusively, so you would apply through there. That would open up August 1st if you would like to apply to High Point University. These are our deadlines for you there. And then we also are test optional. We've been test optional for a number of years. Usually we like to see test scores for merit scholarship consideration and also special programs like the Honors Program. Uh, you'll have to check back with me in the summertime to see what our policy will be for those applying for fall of 2022. But definitely applying to the university, we are definitely test optional. So you do not have to submit test scores in order to apply to High Point. We have been open throughout the whole year in, in the midst of COVID and we're doing on-campus tours even now. And so if you'd like to contact us and schedule a tour, I, um, I also love to do uh, interviews and love to contact you and whether that be in person or virtually moving into the fall, whatever you're comfortable with, we'd be happy to connect with you and you can contact me. There's my cell number and my email address as a way to, uh, to let you know more about High Point University and all that we have to offer. So a little um, synopsis before we move on, four-year guaranteed graduation, four-year guaranteed internships, um, four-year guaranteed housing, and 97% um, placement rate into full-time jobs and graduate school within six months after graduation. I look forward to talking to you more in the future, and there is my contact information for you. 
And now we're gonna pass it off to Jay. Thank you very much. Awesome, thank you so much, David. Really appreciate that. We have one presenter left for the evening with University of Oklahoma. So Amanda, let's close out the presentations. All right, we got to finish strong after all those great presentations. Thank you all for hanging in there as I am your final presenter tonight. Um, as Taylor said, first is not the worst, but maybe we saved the best for last. Hopefully, I'll see if I can bring that home for you guys. My name is Amanda Marsh. I'm the Assistant Director for Admissions and Recruitment at the University of Oklahoma. I am based in San Diego, but I support all of our West Coast Sooners. So anyone who touches the Pacific or Nevada, you are mine. So thank you for being here with us. I attended OU as a non-resident to the university, so I know what it's like to come to OU from out of state. We are actually 44% non-resident on our campus, so just about every other person you meet didn't grow up knowing Oklahoma either. This year, we received more West Coast applications than ever before in our history. We admitted more West Coast students than ever before, and we already have more deposits for enrollment commitments than ever before from the West Coast. So it's a really exciting time at OU. You might be thinking, well, why OU? What has everyone on the West Coast so excited about OU? That's actually the number one question I get in life, and I'm happy to answer that for you. So my number one why OU is our campus itself. If you're looking for that contained walking campus, that quintessential college town, no cars going through, able to walk from one side to the other in about 15 minutes, living on campus freshman year, we have all of that. You can't tell if a building is from 1907 or 2007 because they all have that same red brick architecture that's beautiful throughout. We're also accessible, which is really important for our out-of-state students. We are just 25 minutes from the state capital of Oklahoma City. So while we are your traditional college town, we are not in the middle of nowhere, just 25 minutes away from all OKC has to offer. So internships, airport access, the NBA, every major concert coming through, the zoo, botanical gardens, all that, the nightlife is right there for you. And then we are very much your college town. We are a tier one research institution. We're the flagship for our state and our average class size is right around 32. So while we are considered a large public, only 4% of our classes ever have more than 100 students in them. The YOU, our academics. The National Weather Center is on our campus. If you want to study severe storms, you have to come to where severe storms are. That would be right in our backyard. So the National Weather Center is right there for you. Our Health Science Center, we are one of a handful of complete health science centers in the nation. Anything you want to study on a human being, I guarantee you we have everything from your med, nursing, OT, PT, ophthalmology, the list goes on, pharmacy, dent, we have all of that right on our campus in Oklahoma City. Our engineering practice facilities are incredible and we have 18 different specialties of engineering at OU, so lots going on there. The only students who actually need to declare a major when they're applying are students who are interested in the aviation flying option or any of our performing arts. All other students are admitted to the university as a whole, so you don't actually need to know what you want to study when you come to OU. Undecided is our most popular application major. You would go into what we call university college and it houses all of our freshmen. We do have an umbrella honors college, so regardless of major, you can be in our honors college. So it's available to all students and you can either apply once you're admitted to OU or after you complete your first semester with us. We have a November 1 early action deadline. We are Common App, Coalition, and the OU application, so you can apply whichever way you choose. Most students are still applying to us via the Common App. It's the most common. There's your pun for the day. I'd wink if I know how. We will be test optional for the next five years at OU, so you don't need to worry about sending us test scores, but if you would like to, we will definitely use them for admission, for scholarship, and we can also use them for course placement purposes, but that's definitely up to you. If none of the programs I mentioned interest you, don't worry, I have a QR code on every slide where you can get more information, and I'd love to share more about our other wonderful um, programs we have on our campus. Why OU? study abroad. So not only do we want to get you to Oklahoma, we also want to get you back out of Oklahoma and out into the world. 40% of our students will have some sort of abroad experience during their time at the university. That could be everything from a winter break abroad, a summer abroad, semester abroad, or a full year abroad. We have our own campuses that you'll see on the slider in Puebla, Mexico and Arezzo, Italy. I actually studied at our Arezzo campus. We bought an old monastery there and that is where our students are able to study. It's right in Tuscany, just 45 minutes by train from Florence. If you don't wanna study at one of our OU campuses that are global, we have exchange agreements. We can get you anywhere in the world that you wanna go. No matter where you go to college, because I know not everyone's gonna to come to Oklahoma. I've come to accept that 
please look into study abroad opportunities. I think it is the best thing that you can do during your collegiate years. It is one of the cheapest ways to get abroad. You can get an A in traveling and it's a really incredible experience. If this past year has taught us anything is that the world is very small in reality and very connected. And that global experience is going to look awesome when you're submitting your resumes for your first job opportunities. So please, please study abroad no matter where you go to school. All right, YOU, the cost, that's a big one for our students coming from out of state. Um, if you're a California student, we are actually right in line with what you pay in state at a University of California school. So when you're looking at that total cost of attendance, not just tuition and fees, we are right in line with your UCs. We offer automatic scholarships to all of our applicants based on where their GPA and test score are hitting. So if you fall into that range, you'd be receiving an automatic scholarship, which is awesome. The other YOU, big student life. If you want big school spirit, big football, everything that comes with that, we definitely have it. We are a very involved student life, big Greek life. So fraternity and sorority life is huge on our campus. I always say that if you like winning, we are a great place to be. We've had um, 10 of our teams were ranked in the top 25 in the nation at once this year. So a great place for our D1 athletics. Please scan the QR code to learn more. I'd love to connect with you and answer any questions that you have. I'm so thankful you took the time tonight and I'm gonna be passing it back over to our wonderful facilitator, Jay. Thank you so much. Awesome, thank you so much, Amanda. Now we have just one more little bit in section here. I'd love to ask all of my presenters to come on back onto video here. And I've got a couple questions for you. I would love for you to answer in the order in which you presented. But the first question I've got for you all here is what advice would you give to someone going through the college search process? And Purdue University, let's kick it off. Perfect, great question, Jay. My advice to students is ask the admission counselor, utilize the web page the admissions web page directly from that school that is going to be number one the most up-to-date information and also the most correct information there are going to be a lot of sources that pull information from those websites but it may not be the most up-to-date so utilize the regional admission counselors for the schools that you are interested in as well as utilizing the correct website for the school great and absolutely oh did you have more Oh, no, I was passing the microphone off to Aaron. Gotcha. Yeah, Aaron, take it away. Yeah, I'll kind of add on to Taylor's advice and say that you shouldn't be afraid to reach out to admissions counselors. We are here to help you. Any question is a great question. And so please be communicative and reach out early and often. And if we're not the person who's best to answer your question or to coach you through this process, we will help you get to the right person. Beautiful. And Muhlenberg. Yeah, I'm going to shift gears a little bit and um, just remind you all to practice self-care in this process. I think the college process is something that can feel all consuming and everyone in your life is going to be asking you about it from your parents, your grandparents, your barber, you know, anyone who knows your high school senior is going to have questions about that college process. So take some time to not think about college um, to, you know, kind of set up some boundaries for yourself. So it's not something that, you know, is constantly on your mind, you know, enjoy being a senior, enjoy all of the things that, um, you know, the next year um, brings to you. So, so yeah, my advice is don't always, don't spend all your time thinking about college. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. And David with High Point, what do you have to add to this? Yeah, I would like to share to be adventurous and to have fun in this process and consider colleges that maybe you've never heard of and that maybe your family and friends haven't heard of before. There are so many great schools out there, um, not only those obviously that are here tonight, which are all awesome, but just some other ones maybe out of state that you haven't heard of before. To do a little research, have fun with it, when you go to virtual fairs or in-person fairs eventually and you're wandering up and on the aisle, don't be afraid to walk up to a table you've never heard of and just strike up a conversation and have a little adventure and just learning something new as well. Yeah, absolutely. University of Oklahoma. I would say my big reminder is that it is your college search process, not your brothers, your sisters, your mom, dad, uncles, aunts. It is nobody else's search. Uh, so you do not have to go where family went or where there is an expectation for you to go 
or some name that they have decided put some value to your name because all that's valuable is your actual name. It is your story. Um, I am a mom myself, so I totally get it, moms and dads out there, but it is just time for your student to start making their own decisions about where they want to call home for the next four years. So make sure that you are at the center of the search and it is where you are going to be happy because mom doesn't have to go to the classes with you and live in those dorms and eat in that cafeteria. It's you that is having the experience. Absolutely, absolutely. I've got one more question and it is a little bit lighter, but what is your favorite or event or tradition that happens on campus? Purdue? First, I'm going to talk about what we call a fountain run. We have two main fountains on campus and pretty self-explanatory that you run through them. Pretty popular in the first few weeks of when classes start in the fall is it can be quite warm, but you'll see students sopping wet, holding their backpacks kind of at arm's length away from them, dripping wet. So kind of a fun thing to take advantage of when the fountains are on and hilarious to walk to watch students walk back as they are soaking wet across campus too. Awesome, yeah. What about University of Iowa? Yeah, so I shared a little bit about the Iowa Wave, our athletic tradition in my presentation, but one of our academic presentation or traditions is that on your way to taking an exam or turning in an important paper, you pass by a sculpture on our campus that is a maze, but it looks like a brain. And so it's called the brain rock. And you're supposed to touch the rock on your way to take your exam or turn in your assignment to give you good luck and good academics. Very cool, awesome. Muhlenberg College. Yeah, this kind of speaks to our quirky nature and um, how kind of artsy we are as a school, but we have a tradition um, that happens in the spring called Sack Day. And it's when a bunch of our dance students put themselves in these kind of rectangular lycra um, sacks of various colors and they place themselves all around campus. So you'll be, and they kind of contort their bodies in, in weird ways, but you can't see their faces. It's just kind of these odd body shapes. Um, and so you'll be in the library or the, you know, dining commons or the student center. And you just see kind of, you know, students moving around in these, in these lycra sacks. And it's just a very Muhlenberg moment where, you know, you're just kind of surrounded by the art. So I know that that is definitely a favorite day and one that is certainly a little bit missed, um, you know, with the with many students um, learning remotely right now, but SAC day 2022 is gonna be the best. So we're ready. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. What about High Point? What do you have to add here? Yeah, well, so um, one of our favorite things to do on campus is the five-star restaurant 1924 Prime, which is uh, phenomenal. And every month we roll out a new cuisine from around the world. And then another favorite thing is we have a free movie theater on campus and free popcorn and snacks. And so that's a fun thing that students like to do. And we have different themes throughout the year that we bring out as well. Thank you very much. Yeah. And University of Oklahoma. Okay, so I want to just say football, but I'll go a little bit more in depth. Um, boomer Sooner is what you will hear us yelling across the stadium. All of the students yell Boomer, all of the other fans will yell sooner. It has nothing to do with the saying, okay, boomer, whoever took that over, we need to stop it immediately. Um, it actually goes back to Oklahoma history, so you can look it up. But what's funny is boomers and sooners actually didn't like each other because boomers legally entered Oklahoma while the sooners got there. You guessed it, sooner. So some people might say that our mascot is a cheater. I think that they were opportunistic and leaders um, and knew what they wanted to get. So that's how we'll put our spin on that. But uh, if you see someone wearing something OU, you can yell boomer and they'll yell back sooner to you. Awesome, great. Well, thank you all so much. I wanted to thank you all for being here and giving us all this great information about your schools. It's been fantastic. Thank you all for just sharing your personalities and everything that you have to offer. And thank you to everyone who is here live and anyone who is watching this recording. Um, for those of you who are here live, we do want to just say as of StriveScan, we have a four question survey that will pop up when you close out of this and we would love your feedback if you're available to give that to us. Also, this is just one of many sessions. Um, if you've had a great time here learning about these five schools, there are more sessions to learn about with this great organization. And in about one week, you'll be able to get this recording at strivescan.com forward slash R-A-C-C. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now and you all have a wonderful evening. Bye now.